First of all, thank you for giving me an opportunity to present our work um, that has been implemented on Jasmine. Um, it's the framework to detect ground deformation automatically using CNN or convolutional neural network on um, inside data. Okay, um, so uh, what inside is? So inside is a technique using a radar signal sending from the same satellite at the same location but different times. So if the ground is stable, a return signal at the time two should be the same of the time one. But if the ground moves like seen in here, so the phase of the return signal of time two is different from the signal of time one. So when we subtract these two signals, so the first different here, um, we show as the fringes in the, um, in the image, in, uh, we call it interferograms. So when we unwrap the phase and we know the wavelength of the radar signal, so then we can compute how much the ground moves in the light of, uh, of the satellite between um, two, uh, two times. So the fringes here, you can see um, in the grayscale as the, the line, which is the, the where the phase um, change between minus pi to pi. And these are actually a good features that can be used to um, distinguish between um, deformed or non-deformed ground. So um, we can use INSA to monitor volcano around the world, as you can see in these maps. So the benefit is that um, particular that the one is in the remote areas where the ground-based system are not available. And this map shows the location of volcanoes acquired by Sentinel-1 satellites. Um, they are automatically processed with LIXA. So interferograms cover um, 0.5 degree uh, center at volcano and each of them store in Jasmine. So when the system fully operates, so we expected that it would be around um, 1 million image per year. So clearly automated system to detect the uh, volcanic unrest is um, required. Um, the concept of inside technique is um, like, so straightforward as I explained before, but there are like interfer interference that cause the automatic detection um, not perfect. So the main issue for volcano is the uh, water vapor that could appear in the interferogram that could be look like the, the fringes too. So like showing here, um, the top row is the real deformation signals. And you can see fringes around uh, in the center of the volcano. But on the bottom row is the um, the fringes that occur because of the um, atmosphere. But because of this, we look like the shape of uh, topography of the volcano as well. So this will become, um, might become uh, difficult um, for machine learning to um, classify between these two signals. Um, so what we want to classify, so basically we want to classify the deformation of the ground um, from other signals, it's like um, atmosphere, background, and noise. Um, yes, this is the diagram of the, our deformation detection framework. So the top part is the train process where we use the synthetic samples to train the classifier. And we define this problem as the binary classification. So um, the training data sets, so the positive samples and negative samples and positive samples um, are the image that contain um, deformation um, combined with the stratified atmosphere and turbulent atmosphere. And the negative samples are the combinations of the atmospheres only. And we employ the CNN or convolution neural network to classify between these two signals. So after we train and we use the model uh, to run the detection and then expert check and the fall uh, positive and actually also the other positive signal also feedback and combine with the synthetic samples to retrain the model again. 
Um, the video will recap of their scene and, and how it works. You probably heard this a lot this day about the deep learning they use it to do um, object recognition. It's using a dual phone and almost everywhere now in the world. Um, so it captures spatial relationship with among the um, neighboring pixels as you show in the uh, animation here. So, the, so you have the um, using the convolution operators at this name um, and have the uh, like a filter that apply for example here a three by three. So the coefficients of this are learned according to the um, the, the data set that we have. So basically, so the the different thing are seen and um, uh, compared to the traditional machine learning is that we don't have to extract feature manually, but seen and we learned it and automatically extract features from the um, low level feature like lines and blobs to the higher level of features, like to, to, to tell you the sem semantic meanings. Um, for example, um, for the first layer, you, uh, you take lines and then the next layer of the convolution will be the light connect into the corners. And then for the next level, so the corner and light connect together into shape, for example. And then the shape connect into um, other um, objects, for example, house. And, they, and, and we use that to these, these features um, to give the output result, which is the probability of being such objects. Um, for our work, we didn't train in in from scratch because it takes so long and needs a lot of the data set to do that. But we used the, the technique, um, we used the pre-trained networks and fine tuning them to learn characteristic of the inside images. So we test several networks as well and found that the channel architecture like AlexNet here um, give the best result, a better result than the deeper one. So we stick in using the AlexNet in this work. Um, after we train the model, and then we use it in the prediction process, you should see in the um, bottom diagram here. Um, so when the new program coming to the system, or we can call it inside image. So it divided into overlapping patches like this. And each patch is the same size as the input of the Alex net that required. And then each net of test, um, the scene then will give the probability of um, being deformation. So if it's likely to be deformed at that patch, so the property will be um, close to one. And if it's not deformed, it will be close to zero. And then we use the Gaussian weight to merge the result of this patches back, create the proper probability map here, um, the same size of the input inter programs. And then the local maximum can be found to give the distance where is the, the ground deformed in this um, inter program. Um, you can yeah, you can see the code I implement here on Jasmine um, on my GitHub here. Um, but I have to say that when I developed this on framework, uh, this framework, Jasmine didn't provide GPU. So I trained the model using the um, high computing system from University of Bristol. And then when we after trained it and we transfer that model to Jasmine. And actually to, to be more precise, the, I mean, I start doing the model this I developed in MATLAB. And after I get the model, I transfer MATLAB model into Python and then land that Python on, um, on Jasmine. Um, so this shows the, the command that I used to submit the job to um, detect the deformation through all the 600,000 the programs that we have right now. Um, Imagine if one image take, for example, just two seconds of, uh, to process. If we used only one processor, it would take 14 days to get through all the data we have uh, correct um, around the group. 
but thanks to Jasmine, so that there are so many CPU available, so we can submit many jobs to run simultaneously. So there's the script here that I, I wrote, and then that um, submit like 100 jobs at the same time. But I understand that Jasmine allow like up to 30 jobs uh, per user if CPU are available to running. So with this way, so, um, so run through all the 600,000 images so we can finish the process with only half day instead of 14 days. So when the people said, oh, why we use CPU, not GPU, because um, GP, uh, CPU is available, so, uh, so many CPU on Jasmine. Um, but um, yeah, right, I think right now the GPU is also available on Jasmine, but allow only three GPU running simultaneously per user. Um, and also for the detection process, CPU is not much slower than GPU. So using CPU, that's fine for the detection process. But definitely, we will need GPU again to retrain the model. Um, now, I show you some results. So each pair is the interval run that the probability maps, um, uh, the interval and probability maps. The brighter yellow is the higher probabilities of being deformation. Um, there are some false positive like ice and strong atmosphere. So we fed this back to retrain the, the, the network and we found that reducing, uh, it's reducing a lot the number of false positives significantly um, because now the network learned characteristic of the Sentinel-1 that failed while merged with the basic data sets. But it all still have one, um, uh, one false positive that we, we missed here. So this is a problem with the scene in that what we detect is the loss of fringes. So when the interval gram that produced from the really short period of time, so you can see there's only one fringe here. So it's not actually be able to detect that. And from the plot on the right hand side here, so most volcanoes is moving at the very slow, very slow rate, meaning that you cannot show as many fringes and that will become a problem. So what we propose here, we use the rewrapping techniques to increase the number of fringes. So five is the phase here, and then we multiply phase with some gain, and then we wrap it again to minus pi to pi. So you can see if the right hand side here is the original sig signal with the um, different level of noise. And then we put some gains on, so more um, more fringes appear, and then that's um, good for saving to detect it. However, I have to be careful because if, if they, the noise is so much, so when we put a lot of gain and we wrap the gain, so it creates some small little um, fringes around the noise too. So that's more confusing. So what we propose is to recombine all the probability of this um, four gain here to get the final results. Um, so now you can see that the, the threshold that the thing can detect it from down from uh, 85 centimeter per year at the original one down to uh, four centimeter per year. So that, that, um, that did, um, a lot better. And this is the result running um, just last month. Um, the more they detect more than so they had the, the total number of available here. As I said, it's more than uh, 600,000 images. And uh, the, the, uh, the, the program, uh, sorry, the CNN detect more than uh, 3,000 positive and 35% of them are from the Galapagos um, Islands. Um, we plot the histogram showing the number of positive uh, positives per volcano and how detections are the most of the Sierra Niagara here. The, the second one is the Fujifilm. Um, we also tested by applying the atmospheric collection using gas cost weather models. And we found that at the um, Fujifilm, and most of them actually fall positive. But the other volcanoes around here did um, actually um, that are, are, are true positive. So at least 
from our framework, reduce the number of the program that expert would check to only like 0.55% from the whole. And probability can be used um, to rank the parity that um, expert can inspect it. And this, the, the, this um, method I just presented already implemented um, um, on the COMET portal that you can check it in um, the website here. Um, for conclusion of this talk, so we um, use the deep learning framework to, uh, or CNN um, to get through all the last form of the raft interferograms. Um, the original one is to detect the rapid ground deformation. And like, for example, you can see this is the really kind of newest um, latest eruption um, uh, at the, I'm not sure <laughs> I pronounced this correctly, um, Niara uh, volcano. Uh, on last month. Um, so we use the synthetic samples to, to do this. So one of that because um, of the imbalance data set, because you can see that we have loads of the uh, negative samples, but we don't have much uh, positive samples. And we use AlexNet to classify that. And um, we propose a technique called um, overlapping that I showed you before, so that can detect the slow and localized motion of the um, uh, in the other program. And this is the, um, the list of the, the, the publication that you maybe check it if you want to uh, know more details. Um, thank you.